Okay guys, it's time that we bug out once again. Now, before we get into this, as always, don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe so you can see more awesome and crazy Alaskan content just like this. Now, let's jump into it. Okay guys, so it's been, so, okay guys, so it's been about a year since I did my last bug out bag, and I actually have something fun kind of planned for this whole setup. Uh, hopefully, it all goes well. And, but that's going to be later this fall, probably, uh, when that video is done. But today we're going to be going over my bug out bag setup and overall covering the different <clears throat> products that I'm going to be carrying for my bug out and how I have it set up. Now, the first things I want to go over before we go over the backpack and its configuration of being a bug out bag, I want to go over the equipment that I'd be carrying on my body. So let's dig into that. So let's dig into that first. So starting off with the weaponry, as always. As always, you know, digging into the tools first, or I guess they're all kind of tools, but digging into the edge tools first, we're looking at a, for my survival knife, for the bug out bag, we are looking at the Bill Harsey design uh, Chris Reeves Pacific and this is a really sturdy knife if you guys haven't seen already some of my island survival Videos this is actually my island survival setup knife and like I said I'm doing this as an island survival thing because I have something planned in the future that also requires an island so uh, This bug out setup is a little bit more tailored to island life and I think an island would actually be a pretty sweet bug out location because it gets rid of a lot of your what ifs scenarios because you're really blockaded it's hard for people to actually get you so <clears throat> i like the island life kind of thing so you'll see that this is very tailored to that life so like i said we have our standard island <clears throat> uh, survival knife setup in here we got the super tool 300 and some bait line in here for fishing and we got a nice little ferro rod at the bottom and of course a thigh strap because this would be mounted cross draw on my body so next to that is going to be my double mag carrier for the glock and so this holds two fully loaded nine mil magazines plus of course we have a fully loaded nine mil glock 19 right here that i'd be rocking in a sheath something or sorry not a sheath holster like this so that kind of goes over the sidearm and all of that. I would also be carrying, and once again, I'm referencing to another video here. I'd be carrying my survival PSK or my island survival PSK. So this is my PSK, but it has a full fishing kit in it and a few extra goodies that help me with the survival a little bit, or island survival situation a little bit more. So moving over to the next thing that you guys are probably all have been staring at because all this stuff is kind of boring. The next part and pretty essential for a bug out situation is a good solid sturdy rifle like what are you going to be carrying to defend yourself against people against large animals the largest thing in a bug out situation is threats there's going to be a lot of them and they're going to be varied and many so once again we already went over the fact that i'd have a sidearm a glock 19 and this is an akm or to be more specific, this is a Sentry Arm C39 V2 in full Magpul. So you got Magpul stock, hand grip, foregrip, and so <laughs> you got this thing fully fitted out with Magpul equipment. And I really like this gun. For a while, I actually wanted to go with an A or with an AR. And by the way, this is unloaded for those safety sallies who are like, oh, you know, you're swinging a loaded gun around. <laughs> Anyways. So I wanted to go with an AR, but I actually really do like the AK, and the AK is a little bit more rugged, and the 30 caliber bullet, while obviously it's not a really heavy like 300 Win Mag, the 7.62x39 is still readily available and pretty easy round to find. At the same time though, it also packs enough punch to stop things like black bears, moose, people, and so the round is a really good round for Alaska specifically, and that was probably one of my largest trepidations of why I picked a AK over an AR, was because 
like I said, when you're out in the bush, an AR is not going to stop much around this area. Aside from people, coyotes, wolves, it's going to stop some of your smaller predators, but it's not going to stop larger predators like bears or moose. But this can do pretty much all of that. So obviously this thing isn't going to kill polar bears, but it's going to do a pretty good job against your more common bears, such as a brown bear. So anyways, that's the rifle that I'm using, and this is the bug out rifle. It's a choice for me, and I think it's a pretty good rifle, pretty good choice for me, because it fits a lot of my needs as well. Once again, tailoring this to an island, I don't have any optics on this, because I wanted this gun to be able to be basically abused if it has to be. If it gets thrown in the sand, I don't want things getting, you know, screwing an optic up, optics add weight they also add bulkiness and most importantly they can get really messed up so uh, due to the fact that there's a lot of sand and it's a very dirty environment where I go I like just having the iron sights and the iron sights on an AK work good enough for me I have pretty good eyes I don't wear glasses I don't need to wear glasses I should say and so the AK works really well for me so lastly I should say almost as I forgot uh, the last thing I would be really wearing on my body would be a good set of gloves. These are multi-cam mechanics, just their originals, but these are really nice because when you're doing a lot of bushwhacking or if you're running your rifle or your handgun, it's nice to not get cut up. It's not nice to not really hurt your hands a lot. So because there's a lot of rough environment in the world, it's nice to have a good pair of gloves. So next we move over to the backpack. Now I've kind of just broken this down for ease because last time I did this, I threw my sleeping bag on the whole setup and it was kind of hard to show it all. So uh, this would normally be attached to the bottom of my backpack, but this right here is kind of my medium ground because I can't really choose something or for a bug out bag, I'm really restricted for what all I can carry or what all I can take. So what I wanted to do was just grab a good bag. That's, this is a 20 degree bag. So it's good for those colder nights. But at the same time, if it is 40 at night, you can also crawl into this. And to a degree, if it's 50, 60 above, you don't really want to be in a sleeping bag, in my personal opinion, anyways. So if it's really warm out, I'm not going to be in a sleeping bag anyways. And as it starts to get colder, this will start to keep me warmer. So this is, like I said, a 20 degree bag. This is a Thermarest Parsec bag, and that is what I'm carrying. I also really like that this thing compresses very, very small. As you guys can see here, it's compressed super, super tiny, and it's not exceedingly heavy, being the fact that it is a 20, or 20 uh, Fahrenheit bag. So then, moving over to the backpack we have, uh, this is a Camelback Linchpin. And so, <clears throat> with the linchpin, I've really bulked it down over the course of my time bushcrafting and gaining more experience. And that's ultimately basically my objective. When I go out and bushcraft, I basically use the same pack for bugging out because it's the gear that I'm familiar with and I know how to create a sustain sustaining life with the equipment that I have. So just on the outside of it, I have my silky big boy here. I also have four tent pegs right around here for staking the tarp down in here. And I have a bunch of paracord. I have some more fishing line and bait line in the uh, same kind of clamshell here. Then moving over to this compartment, I have the few components like these to run my water bladder. Now, I actually usually leave my water bladder and all my water bladders because there's actually several in here uh, empty because I try to have a very lightweight and maneuverable backpack so when I'm bugging out if I have to walk three four five miles it's nice that I can have a really lightweight backpack and then when I get to the area where I want to establish myself I can take my water bladder out of here and then fill it up with pond water or river water or any water around me and because I have two different water filters I have one attached to my Geiger rig which is what I have sitting in here this is my Frontier Max so that is what I use for the primary or big water bladder in the backpack and then I also have down in here I have my Platypus Gravity Works whole system 
So those are my two water setups. And with those two water setups, because they filter so much water so fast, I don't really need to carry any water on my system, which allows me once again to be more lightweight and more agile. So moving into this pouch, because I naturally kind of dug into it, I have some uh, just general kind of food stuffs in case I need to stop and eat. Uh, I have trail mix here and I have a bunch of cliff bars in this same compartment. I also have drink mixes, everything from hot chocolate to coffee. And so I got a lot of tr drink mixes in there also to help complement the water. So moving next over to this uh, compartment here, but in here I have a um, lightning strike ferro rod. This is the lightning strike mini rod or lightning strike mini I should say. I really like this thing. It actually works exceedingly well and being the fact that it also comes with a little compartment full of fire starter, it's nice. So then I carry the fire bushcraft essentials, sorry, firebox LF because it's nice to have a little low-key firebox for bugging out. Then in the main compartment, wherever its zippers are, oh yeah, also forgot, can't forget about this. I also have my fire kit in this compartment here for starting fires because of course, once again, if you want to boil any water or do anything with all the water you get, you're going to need the water filters. So, into here, we have, once again, I keep this really basic and really lightweight. I do not like to pack myself down as much as possible. So I just have a bot, which was freshly used, still has stuff on it, but I just have a titanium bot. Once again, this is kept empty because a titanium bot weighs practically nothing. And then I have my good old tarp from UGQ. And then I have my uh, hammock, which is starting to come out as much as I don't want it to. Uh, I have my hammock from uh, Hammock Bliss, and then I got the hammock straps in there. So overall, not a lot of stuff in here because, like I said, I want to keep this really basic. I want to keep this really minimalistic. And <clears throat> honestly, when I bug out to a place like an island, I don't need a whole lot of secondary help through these different means. So I don't need a whole lot of help through these means. Now I will say, and I also forgot to mention, my first aid kit is on this side. I'd also carry because I have more than just this for magazines for the AK and for the uh, Glock 19, I would pack a lot of this extra room with extra magazines for the rifle and for the handgun because one of the most important things, kind of sharing a similar philosophy with um, bushcrafting is kind of like bug out, is that uh, things that are really hard to replicate in bushcraft, we try to have. So things like ammunition for the handgun or for this rifle would have to be scavenged. So or it would have to be what I have. So trying to have as much of that from the get-go is gonna be really important, especially with this gun here, because this is gonna be the main rifle that's going to be hunting, it's going to be defending. It. And so especially when you get in a skirmish with another person that's armed, you would be really surprised at how fast ammo can go. So I would wanna make sure that I have three to four magazines fully loaded, plus one obviously in the gun. So like five to six magazines fully loaded with AK ammo. And that would take up a lot of the extra room in the main compartment. Plus I would probably carry an extra two magazines fully loaded for the Glock. So <clears throat> I do also wanna keep in mind that the reason why I primarily chose the AK and the Glock were because, or the Glock 19 in particular, was because the Glock uses 9 mil, which is an exceedingly common handgun cartridge. And once again, the 7.62 by 39, the AK shoot is also a very pretty common, it's not extremely common, but it's a pretty common round uh, to find. So that was another thing that I wanted to make sure was I was picking pretty common, pretty readily accessible calibers that I wouldn't have to go scrounging very hard for when the eventual day 
arises in the fact that I don't have any more ammo for it because that's going to happen at some point. So anyways guys, hopefully you enjoyed this and it was fun and entertaining. I know you guys like to see some of these bug out videos every once in a long while. So hopefully you enjoy that and as always, God bless and I'm out.